All right. All right, guys. My name is Dr. Sharna Wolverton Sion. This is Swift Fire True TV. This is going to be such a fun time tonight. So I hope you guys will buckle your seatbelts and hang on because we're going to talk about being multidimensional and an awesome documentary that just came out from all these guys, Peter directed, and they're going to go all into that. But before we get there, if you guys could please do your due diligence and tag and share the heck out of this because people are going to want to know about this information. If you haven't already seen the film, get on it. It's super cool. And we're going to talk all about it today. So, or tonight, actually it's day for some people, night for some people, but uh, we're all here even to get everyone on this timeline where, where all these guests was pretty interesting because we got australia and the uk and i mean everyone's everywhere so in the united states too but anyway um yeah so share and uh what i thought about doing in the beginning is just to kind of start out with peter the star of this entire project and kind of give a little background about how did this come how did this happen i mean i know you've been working on it you've been doing film and taking pictures for whatever film and video and i know james does a lot all you guys do and um but this is his baby so i would love for you to share a little bit peter about what's going on and how this was birthed yes yeah, so yeah, I've, I've, I've made, made a, a, numerous a numerous amount of amount documentaries, of documentaries over, the over the years and even james gillyland's contact has begun too that was done a few years ago so I wanted to get a project done on myself just for the amount of evidence that's there. There's a lot of evidence. There's a lot of people that tried. Things never went through or just didn't work out. So it was really weird that in a, about a week period, uh, I had John, Jason and James all say to me, you should just make your own film. And I am the nard about it. And when it just kept on being sales, it's like, I'll give it a go. So I don't consider myself a filmmaker, though I have done films it's just i'm not trained in it in any way john's the same I, like john i don't think considers himself a filmmaker but he's the stuff that john has done as well is absolutely amazing so uh it's just something that i've got a lot of as we know one of the most documented cases not just with the ufo footage but material and other things and i thought having everyone that's involved with it i admire i've seen them all as mentors or friends and i was just like heck let's just do it so it ended up being what it is and yeah now it's available on amazon itunes vimeo and a few like a lot of other platforms as well that's just a brief sort of overview of it awesome and i just watched it the other night it was absolutely incredible if you guys who are watching haven't seen it i will make sure and put a link up so you have a really quick clickable link to get there right away but each and everybody on here um all the guests have are, were part of that and so i would love to hear a little bit about what your guys's role is or how you saw this and you know what you're bringing to the table with with the footage um i know john brought in remote healing and remote viewing and i mean each of you have your own like expertise so you want to just go around and share a little bit each yeah, yeah. sure i'll start um Okay, so 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 Pete, Pete's a funny subject. Um, uh, I work with a lot of different remote viewers, and everybody always loves viewing Pete and the weird stuff that happens to him. Not just Pete; I mean, it's James too. Like James in the ranch, he said he ranch. There's so much weird stuff that that happens to Pete, and happens when you know when I was hanging out with Pete at Isetti, or it ha happens with Pete in Australia, that these videos that he gets with these tiny little dot in the sky. Um, I mean, what do you, what are they? I mean, you know, that's the big question. It's like, like, how do you figure out what they are other than like the messaging that Pete's getting from them? So we've done so many projects on multiple remote viewers who are blind, uh, not knowing what they're viewing beforehand, viewing some of these things, the objects that he's capturing on film. If they were getting something fake, I mean, they're going to say it, right? If they're getting a drone. They're going to say it <clears throat> if they're getting a satellite or whatever. I mean, you know, they're going to say it. They're going to find out the truth of it. But more often than not, what we find with, with a lot of the phenomena that he captures are these multidimensional beings. I mean, sometimes you run into sort of this like 
as semi nuts and bolts kind of phenomena that's going on. But most of the time you find that they're Merkaba type craft with multiple, they're like Merkaba craft slash portals where multiple beings are going in and out of them. And, and, and some of the um, beings that come through, the viewers literally identify as like Michael um, um, or other angelic beings that are, you know, just kind of checking in on him, looking at him, trying to move energy towards him, get him to focus on them. And, you know, it's a wonder too, because like it's a dot, literally, if you can like get it in between your fingers there, it's about that big. And I don't, I don't know how he sees this stuff, but he's obviously guided to, to see the phenomena. And, and so some of the other things that we've seen with regard to, you know, what's happening around Pete has been um, these really, really mm -hmm. interesting aliens, these little guys um, that we end up calling, well, we call them the cheese friends. And the reason why we call them that is because they always want cheese like when when we remote view them, um, the viewers, I mean, they don't know what they're viewing, but they're, they're talking about these beings who are asking them for cheese and dairy products. And this was <laughs> this was the the video that Pete had when there was something in his kitchen and you've got this little head. It's like IR light and you got this little head poking through. Right. So that's those guys. And, and that's also the guy that showed up behind the truck. Right. You know, remember um, uh, at the holiday park. And the guy showed up behind the truck, the same same beings. So so the viewers on the team love viewing whatever happens to Pete. And so we do that on a regular basis. Pete sends me videos and I just like put it in the queue for the remote viewers because you always know there's going to be some kind of weird, fun experience for them. Because, you know, it's not like remote viewers are like disinterested anthropologists. You know, they're they get involved they are seen by the beings that Pete's interacting with. And so these beings begin to interact with them. So it turns into this whole, and I think the, the, the title of the film is extremely apropos because it's, it, it, it's fully multidimensional, also for the remote viewers and the people who experience it when they're remote viewing these, uh, these uh, things that are happening to him. So yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it's always fun. It's always fun having um, these experiences and hanging out with Pete. Well, I'm going to jump in um, just real quick because I like that you brought in that whole um, fake versus real and, you know, with, with your background and your research, uh, I, I took your course. I was there at a SETI with you. And when we did some of the tasks that we did, even what happened on a SETI and or other places, we found things that were fake or, you know, right. not necessarily whatever. So I know what you're talking about. And I think that br brings so much credibility to the documentary and to what happens with Peter and Jane. Well, everybody here who's had, you know, experiences is that, um, and even the other day I had a picture and I showed it to Jason and Jason was like, Oh, actually that's just a reflection, blah, blah, blah. So we keep, there's an accountability here with, you know, it's not just a big fluff kind of deal. Let's just make it fun and hypey. Like this is real research. So we're like, if I'm wrong or you're wrong, we're going to say, no, nope, yes. that's just nothing. And I like that. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is what you said about weird things happening with them. I've been there too a couple of times now with, they'll like get out their clock and they're like, Oh, three minutes so-and-so is coming blah 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 and the next we'll all time it and boom yeah. something shows up in three minutes and yeah. we can all see it and it's like well, how do they do that i mean every single time but it's yeah. super cool so yeah. i i can witness to the weird things that happen around these guys yeah yeah i know i know when i was in australia hanging out with pete i mean we saw all sorts of stuff i mean he's he's like an attraction magnet um and it just just so much bizarre stuff happening in the sky. And I mean, that was how it was in, in Australia too. I mean, you would, Pete would be like, oh, they're gonna be here in this amount of time. And then we'd be looking and there, there they are, there they go. What's really interesting though, is like, there's this um, triangle shaped craft that that I saw with Pete and Pete saw a couple times in the past, or many times, I think. And yeah. it, um, even recently it flew by here in the new property about four months ago. Right. Okay. So yes, flying by on a regular basis. And we saw that 
um, when we were in Australia and we, we filmed that, like did this loop and then took off. And when we remote viewed that like multiple times, it was the same being flying this craft. And Pete got a visual of the being, right? I remember you got a visual of the being and then we also viewed the being and it was the same thing. Like your visual was totally correct based off of our remote viewing data, multiple remote viewers of this like being with sort of this big head that looked, I mean, as weird as it sounds, it looked like some kind of pig dog, right? You remember that? <laughs> and, and, and so we had followed this being with remote viewing from this flying this craft. And what he was doing was checking on Pete and he checks on Pete on a regular basis, finds out where he is, make sure everything's okay. And then he goes and we followed him back to this like mothership craft where there are these other beings. But one of the weird things that happened was that as we were viewing it, and I was one of the viewers on this, the, the being recognized us in the craft. And when it got close to this mothership, other another being came out to kind of like shoo us away, you know? So yeah, it's kind of interesting. Remote viewing, I mean, God, you know, it's like, if you have multiple people getting the same experience, it's like, well, there you go. Mary, you were going to jump in, but did you have something you were going to say? Well, I'd like to say first that I think it's brilliant that Peter's um, brought this information to the public because multidimensional is exactly where ufology needs to go because I uh, know James will join in here with that one, is yeah. that we can't stay with the nuts and bolts. We have to look at this from a multidimensional perspective. And what's brilliant about individuals like Pete, who has had consistently great information and, you know, mm -hmm. the, the video, the, um, the whole gamut of experience is, you know, for me, co so compelling in terms of its reality. So he's not only satisfying the um, skeptics or the, um, the old style nuts and bolts as in ufology, He's also opening up to what I'm seeing more and more is those that have many multidimensional experiences. They may not have the footage to demonstrate it. They may not have pieces of the graph. They may not have that side of things, but they're experiencing exactly the same kind of patterns that Pete's experiencing, where they're seeing beings, whether or not they're not always physical, sometimes they're interdimensional. You know, we know they're transdimensional. We know that some may even be coming from our future. So we're looking at a whole range of frequency of intelligence, not just physical intelligence. And what's wonderful is when you can own it, as Pete's done, he's been courageous enough to say, look, guys, this is my experience. This is how it is. And against the naysayers that, you know, have tried to take him down or they've tried to dismiss this, you can't dismiss the footage. You can't dismiss the compelling information that goes with that. And John, you've been able to validate it beautifully with remote viewing. All of you with your, your own experiences know that this is real, but it's bringing it together in the way that Pete's done, which I think has been really spectacular and compelling. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mary. Like, and that's something I want to add here is that this film, it is for people that are in the community, but more so I wanted it to be something that I could present to a family with children, to somebody just watching television that don't know a single thing about this. And that's why I think the way that I introduced it with Mary a lot at the start with flickers in between me and the footage was great because... Mary was setting the stage for where we all put other things in later. And Mary can go just as deep as all of us as well. But the study, working with their commission foundation, that the kids, the thousands of people that she's worked with, and I've worked with a few thousand people now as well myself over the last four or five years. But what I want to add to this is it isn't just me like John was saying, and James has been with me as well, and James has just as much stuff going on as me, but... I've had over 300 people in my own home that have experienced this and over thousands of people around the world when I've held events, whether it was when I was in Italy, Mexico, uh, America, Bali, other places. This is something that doesn't matter where I am and I don't think it's just me. I think this stuff's going on everywhere and I don't think it's as much as a traveling in a linear way that people think that they have to get somewhere. They can literally just pop in. So, and that's why I'm grateful and, th and thankful to everyone here and taking the time to come on with this and also do the documentary, because I think when we put it all together, it does even set something for even sequels to be done later on 
to really get to deeper stuff because I couldn't even cover, yes, a very small fraction of what I could say, but the material that I've got to present. And James and John have held the material, like physical material I've got as well, but the actual photos and videos and other testimony that I've got, I couldn't even touch the sides with it at all. It was just no way could I do it. So uh, I just wanted to add that in there. Jason, you want to go? <laughs> yeah, I'll go, yeah. I'm, t I'm too busy listening to everybody else. It's great. Um, yeah. yeah, the first time I came across Pete was basically through Mary, uh, w watching through the research of YouTube and, you know, my journey coming along and, and how I got into analysing photographs and everything for people. You know, I'm, I'm Mary, where she was um, stuff she's had out of the past is phenomenal you know that you've got you've got to get out and watch everything that everybody does on this you know podcast um it's not just this movie it's what it's the background of what they all do and we've all come together to do it um when pete comes to me with with a piece of footage or whatever same with james um you just know you're going to get something really special something is going to be really good um, and when I go into my analysing of the, the images or the, the footage, photographs, whatever I get, you know, what, whatever sort of media it's sent to me, um, yeah, it's when you analyse it, you get into the, the depth of when I actually go into it, you can see what Peter is on about, the things he's actually seeing. And again, it's not the nuts and bolts types of craft that people are seeing. You know, people around the world are seeing discs, you know, elongated, cylindrical, orbs which are more you know more people are seeing nowadays um it's every type shape you can think about and when people see these things they often if it's not 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 some bolts that they can see it they don't believe what they're seeing you know and we've got to think outside the box further again to the multi-dimensional and the likes of james you know and john and mary and everybody else who's bringing this forward for everybody to see Awesome. Yeah, I want, I want to say uh, um, Peter sell himself short because he's done at least three documentaries that I know about. Mm -hmm. And he did uh, The Uncontrolled Narrative, which I thought was awesome, and had all the witnesses coming on saying, yeah, they gave us exactly when and where the ship would appear, and it appeared, and and with the footage on it and everything else. So, And uh, he said he down under, and uh, the contact has begun too, and now his new one, multidimensional. So, and and you know his work, I think, totally supersedes some of these other documentaries that got so much hype and out there, and really didn't say anything at the end. And I wanted to go on that, talk a little bit about that subject. Is that I've been watching these because um, it's winter here, you know, so I flip up YouTube, and I've been watching all these UFO documentaries. And I go, my God, this is so primitive. You know, they're still talking about Roswell. Something happened 70 years ago. You yeah. know, do they exist? Are they real? <laughs> uh, you know, it's like, yeah. I go, my God, this is 70 years old, you know? And, and then they're talking, when we go to Mars, we might find this bacteria. We're looking for this rock. And, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm watching these documentaries. I'm going, my God, we've been going to Mars since the 60s. We have bases there. We have bases on the moon. We have, and they're still running these documentaries over and over again. And, and I'm just, I'm looking at these things. I'm going, this, this is the most S show I've ever seen, you know. Uh, you know, they're not covering anything about what's going and all of us here, you know, we we know they're real. We know who's on the ships. We know their culture, what they look like. Some are human. Some are very different, you know. And, you know, a good example is the feline beans. Is I've been talking about the feline beans for a long time. Well, they appeared to me first. And then I did research and I found out they're all throughout history, these feline beans. And, you know, Sekhmet and and Narissa and the Narsringa and the Bashat and everything, you know, it's all throughout history. And then and then John comes up and remote views views at his group and they go, Well, these beans are humanoid cat beans, you know. And and so and so I go, bingo, you know, right on, got that. I didn't I didn't have that, I didn't like have any of that in my mind. I didn't even know about that until we viewed that stuff. 
yeah. then you know you find out too that like not only humanoid cat beings but they're like connected into like chariots of the gods and stuff like that. yeah 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 and and these are like fifth sixth seventh dimensional beings different varieties of these cat beings and then I get a photograph and I send it to Jason and he doesn't analyze analyze it. He goes, wow, this looks like a lion bean with a robe on, you know, standing in the middle of the field. So, um, you know, you have all this evidence and backup and with everything together with the, with the footage analyzed, with remote viewing, uh, and then you read the ancient history. It's all there, but nobody's touching this. this I've never seen anything like it. They're, there's this massive, massive uh, cover-up going on and, and a controlled narrative, and it's still going on, and, and Peter's movie just blows the lid off that whole thing, as well as the uncontrolled narrative and the other things he's done are just blowing the lid off of this. And, and that's what needs to happen right now because this is, you know, for 70 years we've gone nowhere, and the same people are talking, and you got the same narrative going on, you've got the... History channels and ancient aliens. We all know what happened there. John and Peter were there when ancient aliens come out and they censored everything I had to say. An hour and a half of who's on the ships, our ancient, our real ancient history, this colonies and censored. And they showed a picture of my hand going for a camera. And that was it. That was my big debut on ancient aliens. Your hand's famous. I've been on those, before. I've been on those <laughs> things before. But, uh, you know, if, if you don't really think there's a controlled narrative, just reason this you're looking at stuff you're looking at fuzzy tic tac pictures you're looking at 70 year old stories you're looking at abduction stories that happened 70 some 80 years ago um and these same groups are still on the circuit and where are the people on the circuit that are bringing out the real stuff and and one other thing i wanted to say like mary's been doing this for a long time i've been doing it for 36 years now intensely I mean, all my life I've had contact, but he said he's been going on for 36 years. And and you look at this and you just go, after a while you go, where's the beef? You know, where where is this? Where's the meat? You know, where's the photographs, the footage, the knowledge, you know, the historic, the real historical knowledge about the earth being colonized again and again. You go, where is this? And it's just not it being taught to us. So. Uh, I think this movie's awesome, you know, and getting that out that there's a much bigger pic picture going on and it's being validated on every level right down to the physical and it's time for us to grow up and join the rest of the universe. And that's what. So what do you think is the reason for the disclosure? Um, because I'm super excited that Pete, is so well all of you are so open about all of this and if it won't come out and there is censorship which that's going on in the medical and the political and everything so to, for you to come out and go you know what it's not out there guess what i'm going to do it and which i love but what what's the reason for that pete what do you think there's multiple agendas i've spoken to people that are very well known within different governments a lot of you would know the names and the people that i'll be speaking about and there's there's a couple of things here one they don't some of them don't honestly have a, a friggin idea what's going on some of them do but there is also a double-edged sword with this where it is now a possibility i believe as well with talking to some of these people that people are open to now to the existence of ets but when you go that step further and you go, some of these beings are living right next to us or inside the earth, or they're coming from a different frequency, not, al not alone with uh, like Project Blue Book. Yes, uh, these objects exist of unknown origin, but they're not a threat to national security. And what can we do about them in the skies, basically, is what you could say with that. And I don't talk about really the 700 cases in Blue Book that were unsolved. But when you take it to a new level going, all right, ETs are like a stepping stone to the multidimensional aspect. It's sort of a bit of a jump for the public to go from ETs to, oh, some of these things are like can pop in and out. They're not even from another planet. That's like a yeah. big part. It's not that they can't digest it. But like I say, do you need, if a bird landed on my front lawn, do I need to ring up the government and go, can you come here to tell me, is this a bird on my front lawn? It's the same sort of thinking mentality with a lot of this. Again, we need to be discerning with certain things, but we also need to be discerning what's being told to us about this, especially with what I've seen recently. 
is a lot of material that is our our crafts, even if they're in unacknowledged special access programs, that are being released as AT vehicles. So most of the stuff that I've seen is our crafts in the new disclosure stuff that we're seeing on the news, unfortunately. Yeah. Now, I have- it, but okay. Jane in the middle of nowhere and me in the middle of nowhere are getting clearer footage than the military, and I can tell you why. They've got multiple cameras on those crafts. they are downgraded the infrared flur imagery of the camera. So what they've got is that they've got the raw footage and they've downgraded the quality so it looks blurry. And they've also, from what I've been told, got another two cameras on the planes filming these that would be clearer than what I've got. I'm using television cameras and James is sometimes, which are 4K cameras, but James has a scope where I'm, I'm mostly getting daytime and I use it that way. But the bottom line is, why is the footage even being downgraded in quality? It's a lot clearer, the original footage. So whether we do go into, there is a cabal aspect to this. There is what I call the lower light that are distorted forms of awareness and and, uh, what we could say diminished in light, that there is that agenda there. There's also beings that are trying to be neutral about this and those that are assisting humanity. So... When I say when I when we're talking about the disclosure aspect, I think the disclosure comes from within. When we look at other disclosure projects and things done in the past, there's been an overwhelming amount of government officials, uh, astronauts, military from all walks, even people that have been in the corporations and the programs within that. That it's undeniable. But when you've got the media that control what goes out there and with the flow of it. If not enough people are seeing it, it's not on their radar and they're trying to put it on the radar now, but it's going to be controlled. And what I was told that to start off with, it will be the truth wrapped in a lie. So that's all I want want to say to people in terms of that. Be aware of what's being shown because there is an agenda behind it. But then there will be a flip come after that. That will be the real stuff come through information wise. So that's my bit of a rant on it anyway. Yeah, I want to say one more thing. The, uh, the whole program is to keep people from not realizing, you know, that there are multidimensional being existing on a vibrational continuum all the way back to source. And so we're not just a body and a personality. We're a body that has a personality and has all these other levels of ourselves, you know. And, uh, you know, so they don't want us to know that because they want to keep us trapped in survival, sex and power, the first three chakras. And they do that through fear. You should be very afraid. There's age, there's terrorism, there's there's things, you know, like you know, all that stuff. That's all to keep you in fear, keep you locked into survival and fear and things like that. That's the game that's being played. And you've got to step out of that and rise up into the heart and start meditating and get in touch with that met multidimensional aspect of yourself. And then you're gonna have contact. And and that's what this does this movie is doing that for people and that's why it's a threat and they also have fuelless energy they have anti-gravity they have counter gravity they have things that make med beds look like primitive technology and you know what that would do to the power the war and disease profiteers and the other guys so so that's another reason it's being censored but there's multiple reasons why it's being censored well it's interesting to me too that um i mean Disclosure. When I hear when I hear the word disclosure, and it's coming from more official sources, it just makes me laugh because, I mean, disclosure. You want disclosure, you go inside yourself because, like James was saying, when you go inside yourself and begin to know that you're one with everything, then there's open lines of communication. Then is when you go into that multi-dimensional space because that's what they are. They, then is when communication can truly begin, as opposed to. I mean, you look, if a UFO landed outside here, people would go out and either try to kill them or treat them as gods. One of those two. And, and, and that can't happen. That's not supposed to happen anymore. It's supposed to turn into a situation where, where we realize the oneness of everything so that we can truly go into a place of like a co-creation and communication as opposed to separation. You know, so disclosure is ridiculous to me because I can I can go connect and be disclosed myself. No one needs to tell me that something is there or not there. And and this is the problem that we have as well, where people actually have no idea how to get information themselves anymore. They have to rely on somebody with a, a tie in front of a camera 
wrapping a story up in a nice pretty little package for you to believe in. And that's a huge problem. That's what's getting us into this huge mess right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of people wouldn't be able to deal with it. And again, it's not to say who am I to say who can deal with it or not. But the only reason I just want to butt in here and say this is that when you're interfacing with these intelligences, they know everything you've done, everything you'd think about doing, your good thoughts, your bad thought. And the, what, what we could deem as those in service to others or positive, they don't care. They, they don't care. They've got love and compassion and non-judgment for you. But for the average human, when you're interfacing with them, for you to be a complete open book, that would really shock a lot of people because it's like, oh, I can't hide anything. Yeah. And that's where we've got to come to truth. And that's where we really shift to civilization. Yeah. Mary, you got something on there? You look like you're <laughs> contemplating. Look. Everything that's being articulated makes absolute sense from my research because what I found more and more is not so many people coming to me because they want to find out what's happened on the craft with missing time, although that's still something that many people would want to know. I had this experience. It stayed with me. I want to know if it's real. I only know that from that time I've been different. I've had a different way of thinking. I find myself passionate about the planet or I'm changing my diet or I want to go into healing. So all this transformation that occurs after after those experiences. But the, the other thing, and you'll know this very well, James, is they want to understand now more of what's happening multidimensionally because they're starting to see orbs, energy fields, beings, um, getting insights, downloads, starting to manifest scripts or symbols or artwork or music frequency or star languages and they're saying to me how do I um, understand how do I work with it how do I bring it into my reality in a way that I can trust it so a lot of my work now is giving them the tools to understand how this all works from telepathy and I mean obviously John you're, you're doing that as well is people are having this multi-dimensional interaction but they're not quite sure how to whether they can trust it is it safe? Are demons going to come and get them, depending on their Christian beliefs or whatever? Um, and saying, so who are they? So my work has been more and more is showing them how it works, how to understand the different energies, you know, what I call the energy signatures of each of these beings that are connected to them. And some of them have been connected to them right from their birth as um, a soul spirit connection or soul um uh, intelligence that is part of their star family and their ancestors and who are these other beings they might be lion beings they might be at some kind of feline so many uh, have um, spirit guides that are felines and say oh I'm just seeing a lion or I'm just seeing a feline or whatever so it's about the, an acceptance that this is okay and actually it's our evolution that's happening here it's our now it's coming to us in a way that's allowing us to honor the fact we're multidimensional, we are essence, we are not just our physical bodies, that there is a consciousness that can go out of body. We discovered with the free um, surveys that we did with 4,200 people, consciously they were talking about 75% of their interactions are out of body, not physical. So it's much harder to qualify that in 3D terms, but in multidimensional terms, it makes absolute sense when they're seeing themselves as an energy being or seeing themselves as a ball of light or of uh, seeing themselves out of body in the form that they most connect to from another uh, lifetime or we call past lives. I think it's all now, but anyway. Um, but the bottom line is when are we going to get to the point where we stop just thinking of ourselves as a physical 3D um, being when we have an essence that is not only multidimensional, we can access all those other realms because we are multidimensional because we are a frequency, because we are part of them. So this is the next step, is owning our true nature. And this is what, you know, Peter's really demonstrating our true nature. And isn't it time, you know, that our um, our Western thinking grows up and matures and starts to understand we're consciousness. And that is now where we have to go. And that's disclosure from the ground up. This is not waiting for them out there, these governments and whatever, that are trying to yeah. hold on to power. 
This is us saying, you know what? We don't need you to tell us. We know our experience. I just want to add you to, I agree with everything Mary said. And with that, this is where there is a way that we can validate the multidimensional experience, which Mary was saying, that's very hard to do. And I'll give you an example, and three of us here are doing it. I'll say more, but I don't want to go there because uh, some people are tapped in here more than what people think. But John, James, and myself are in communication, and we say when and where the crafts will appear. John will re even remote view events ahead of time with me to go at this time, Pete, in this area, this is what we're going to be doing or looking in this direction because an experience is going to happen here. So what you've got is us getting information ahead of time and then it happens. Now, either that's a coincidence, but it's beyond a coincidence when this is repeatable, not over just a couple of times, but over many years. That is the start of being able to reproduce this. Science wants something to be replicated three times. Well, we've done it more than three times each. <laughs> So yeah. this is where it, that, that is a thing, a key thing that Mary's saying. This is probably, I believe, one of the keys to now showing, all right, we're getting this in information, whether it's through the mind's eye, through thoughts, through feelings. And then what we say from those experiences, we tell someone, then the craft appears. And when that happens over and over, that's the way that we can start to validate, all right, how the hell did they get it? I've seen it with James as well. People go, James will go, it'll be three past nine, they'll rock up three past nine, the craft comes down. I'll tell you a story. There's a friend of Mary and mine that were in America, James's. And it was James's birthday and James walks out and says, there's going to be two Pleiadian crafts come over. I think it was like 8.30 or something like that. And my friend said to him, geez, that's a pretty bloody bold statement. You want to, you know, you put your reputation on the line saying that to everyone at the ranch. Well, at the exact time James said, not one, but two crafts, like he said, came over at treetop level straight over and then they imploded and dissolved they, they weren't there and this isn't like a satellite or a space station this is low and it's just to give an example that's that's getting information multi-dimensionally and then you you were able to record it with witnesses how the hell did that happen if they didn't make that up and it, why is it repeatable that's where we've got to get to now because that's going to show that the human body through beyond the seven senses, I actually say eight senses, really, through sight, sound, touch, taste, smell, as well as emotions, feelings, thoughts, and the mind's eye, we interface transdimensionally. And that's where it's going. Because once you can open up the senses, then you rise to the occasion to be able to experience the physical because we see with our brain, not even with our eyes or our pineal gland, it's the brain that's decoding the information. And once yeah. you rise, you can start to have those experiences come online. You know, they're, they're here right now. They're here right now listening to this show and I yeah. think adding their energy to the show. But uh, yeah. yeah, my ears are ringing like crazy right now and I hold that side <laughs> going off. So the Palladians are here right now. Can, can I add to that, Peter, just to say that it's hard to validate to the average person. I should right. have yeah. Yeah. because yeah. everyone yeah. connects to that yeah. source. One of the things I teach them to do is to get the validation. Okay, you've given me this information, now prove it to me. And it may be through a resonance, or it may be that they'll see a book that pick, they pick up and it has that information. Or they may be given physics, they may be given or you know information on cosmology that they can look up and validate. So the information that's being downloaded has an integrity that initially they may have questioned. But when they look into it, they find that, you know, they'll look into and research and they'll find it's actually spot on. But it's very hard for the average person in the public, you know, to trust that kind of information. You know, it, your intuition, your feeling, your knowing, your sensing, which is all multidimensional information. But so many have been programmed out of trusting that. So they're told, oh, you know, that's just what's a feeling, what's the knowing, yeah. you know. Well, that, that's what... what I that's what I had just written down, Mary, too. So we're syncing up is, is what I love about this movie and, and Peter's idea to let families and anybody see it is because just watching this could, who knows with the frequency that comes through the TV that ignites you to a memory or to an idea or to something that has happened reoccurring, but you weren't awake to it or aware to it or didn't have the perception because that training hasn't been through there, you know, or that program hasn't been there. Um, I know that that's exactly what happened to me is I had had all this 
stuff happened over the years and all these different things in my mind and different dreams and visions and, you know, ideas and flashes. But my, my left brain was like, stop it. You know, don't do that. Don't pay attention. People are going to be crazy. You know, think you're crazy. Don't talk about it. But it wasn't until, you know, in this last like five or six years when I have come forward, I have had the courage to say some things, to put some things together, attract people like you guys, bounce some things off and find out, oh my God, this is not crazy at all. And now that people can watch something like this or, or your documentary and your other documentaries or go to a SETI, I mean, to me, it, it makes people feel less crazy. It inspires people to be more aware of what is going on and to pay attention to the senses that you were talking about, Peter, um, and to the gifting of the creative beings that we are to just go like, my God, we are amazing. And if we all tap into that and realize how freaking powerful we are, we can actually take the globe and do something really positive for not just us, but for galaxies, not just us as individuals or our families or communities or medical or schools or politics everything we get it all when we come together as a collective and remember who we are and what we're here for now and i don't think they want us to know so i love that all of you do what you're doing this is trainable it's teachable it's ignitable it's tangible and we have the power to be who we already are it doesn't it's not something you have to try to do you we're there the, the hard thing with this, and I do very similar work, is sort of having, um, well, John, James, and Mary, it sounds like I'm talking about the Bible now, um, <laughs> having them as mentors, they've all taught me stuff where I've been doing appointments and assisting people for years now, probably four or five years. It was, it's been longer than that for putting my time and energy into it. Working with some of the top psychics and remote viewers as well, there's there's a sort of a tricky thing with this. And what I describe this is, is that, if you can't see, touch, taste, smell something or get external validation, we're going to doubt it, right? But when you work, and I've talked in, talked about, or John's talked with me about this intensely, where sometimes you're not going to know that you're right when you're delving into this until after the fact. As an example, you might get psychically information from a guy connecting with them that you're going to see a friend in three weeks' time that you haven't seen for 30 years. So in three weeks' time, you end up seeing a friend you haven't seen for 30 years. So sometimes you don't know until after the fact, but then what I say is to know that you're right or get that feeling that you're right, you've got to go back to how you felt when you got the information. This is the tricky part because we don't, we don't want to believe everything coming through either. Sometimes there's going to be manipulative energy. Sometimes it's the mind chatter kicking in that will make up the information if there's nothing there to derive. And so it's playing with these abilities and it's not like you're doing what we're doing where we, we help people professionally. It's, Something where if you're going to play with this yourself, it doesn't matter if you screw up. But the, every time you practice, you're going to see that the information is usually answered before you finish the question or it's very smooth and got a flow. Rather than when you pause or you hold on or you wait a few seconds, the mind chatter starts to make the information up. So this is the tricky part is that people need to get out of control of wanting to be in control when you're yeah. interfacing or doing this because... The key is that that's the key to multidimensional mind. You've got to let go and just be the observer. And that's the hard thing, I think. But anyone can do it. If I can do it, anyone can do it, in my opinion. You know, that the, it's interesting, too, because it's, it's putting intuition first and logic second and acting out of intuition and, and always using that first. And, you know, if you ever study the, the ages, the, the four ages that like from the Kali Yuga, that we're in the Kali Yuga right now for the Indian ages and the, the, the Hindus had them. Uh, many cultures had them. The Greeks had them, the Golden Age, the Silver Age, the Bronze Age, etc. So, so in the earlier ages, um, how they, and we remote viewed these ages and how people acted. In the earlier ages, they were connected into their divinity because they placed intuition first and logic second. And as we went through the ages, that started to devolve. And so this age, the Kali Yuga, more or less the last stage before we move back into a golden age, hopefully, um, we've we've put logic in front of intuition, which destroys any sense of divinity we have. And we talk ourselves out of everything other than purely going off of intuition. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. You said about frequency before and everything sits well with what everyone's saying. 
um, even down to when I analyse photographs for somebody, I've lost count of the amount of times people have sent me an image of a UFO or whatever's in in the, in the you know unexplained within the their pictures or video, and um, they always say the same thing. When I took the photograph. I couldn't see anything in the photograph, or there was nothing there at the time when they took the photograph. But later on, when they viewed their images, there was a UFO. And again, that comes back to the frequency, like you were saying before, that people can see and they're opening up and they can actually, the camera is actually receiving the image and they're sort of the conduit in between, they're actually receiving it via. And then when you see the the actual image themselves actually there in black and white, it's believing what they're seeing. But again, it's getting people to believe what they're seeing at the time or not seeing. And again, also with the frequency, you know, you can have somebody, a group of people, uh, James or, you know, Pete probably says the same thing. They could be out viewing at night. They could be viewing, you know, um, multiple UFOs. And they could be in a group of people and only one person or so many people will see it. The rest of the people wouldn't see anything in the group. So, again, that's frequencies. And, again, the ultra, you know, the electromagnetic spectrum, that mm-hmm. side of it as well. That's, yeah. that's a big thing. And so many times there will be people with us that can't see it, but they can see it being filmed on the camp when they look at the viewfinder. Mm-hmm. So whether it's just something that, <clears throat> they haven't risen to the occasion for it or they literally can't see it. But that would be something common for you, wouldn't it? Somebody coming to you going, I didn't see anything at the time, but I had a feeling even to take a photo and then this appeared on the photo. Yeah. 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 I wanted to mention one thing. The uh, It's very important to qualify your contact. And there's an old, old saying, the mind in which you seek is the mind in which you connect. And so... You know, you really need to come from the heart and learn how to heal unseen negative influences. And there's tools that come with contact. And unfortunately, these tools aren't taught with a lot of groups. And Peter teaches them, other people teach them. Uh, But it's very, very important because we have a saying, just because you're dead doesn't mean you're enlightened. And just because you're an ET doesn't mean you're benevolent. The the good news is, is most of the malevolent ones have been removed. Um, but, you know, I, Peter will agree, I'm other people too, we've had our butts handed to us by these malevolent ones in this process in the beginning. And it was all about our own self-master. We had to learn how to deal and how to clear these energies. You know, and if you're having a lot of sickness or illness or accidents or, or just negative thinking going through your head constantly, you know, sit down and do a clearing. You know, they're on our website, they're in all my books. It's very easy to clear these energies. So uh, there is a downside. And there's one thing I want to warn about is there are people in the ufology movement that just go out and they say, you can't be a snob. You have to open up and let anything come in that wants to come in. And, And that's the most irresponsible thing I've ever heard. And they said, there's nothing negative out there. And, and uh, there are no negative ETs And, and you hear these stories and I go, what planet do you live on? You know? And there's always balance. There's always positive, negative. There's self-serving ones. There's ones that are t- totally into service. You know, there's malevolent ones. There's benevolent ones. And it's just like coming to America, you know, and, and you might meet some really cool people in America and you might go down a dark alley and get mud, you know. And and so, you know, that it's just reality. It's It's balance. You know, it's what's happening out there. But you know, you don't need to be a victim to any of this stuff. You know, you can transcend it. You can use these tools and clear it. And you can have an awesome time out there with the most benevolent beings. And, and you can experience the love and consciousness and energy that you can't even imagine, you know, by working with these higher dimensional beings. So um, that's what I we really want to sponsor. All of us want to go in that direction. And But you got to realize there is there is a dark side and there are people out there aligned with that side. And that's why there is such a controlled narrative right now, because there are so many people aligned and, you know, it ties into the music and the television industry and everything. So, and the media, you know, so that's why things are being censored. So the light is always suppressed. It's always censored. That's just the way it is, but they've, they've done their gig. They've had their way and now their time is over. So 
Uh, I think to you, um, the clearings are good even for you know voice te voice to God tech. Um, you know, which we have a whole video on that that we all did together. I think Jason wasn't there, but I think everybody else was there, which I can put in the link here because that seems to be a really popular situation right now. And, and those clearings are have been very beneficial to that. I love how you're like, be responsible in this and don't be just like anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we, you know, we're coming up on the top of the hour. Um, what any final words and tell everyone where to get this and you know any last words if you just want to go around and share something that's just burning that you need to share you want to go first <laughs> we'll go around go, start with Jason we'll start with Jason and go to James yeah, and go around and get higher on the list yeah um, well like you know everybody here is a big part of the jigsaw puzzle we're all just pieces everybody you know we're all a big you know we'll put it together and yeah. this film will you know it is just the start of something it's part of someone's journey somewhere someone's going to watch this and it's going to spark something like we like we, we talked about before it's it's just the start everyone i always call it the richard dreyfus syndrome you know where you you know you you get that mad you've got to stop Looking at all the information out there, you know, whether it be, you know, remote viewing or actually going outside and looking for the ETs, extraterrestrials, whatever you want to call it, you're going outside and making that connection. Um, I'd advise everyone to, to get out there and go and, you know, go and watch it just, just to make your own mind up. Watch it and make your own mind up and, and listen to what these people are actually saying it within it, you know, look at the footage, look at the proof that's there mm -hmm. and then see what, you know, what you actually come up with yourself instead of listening to the media, listening to, you know, other things on YouTube and, you know, that, and you don't have to listen to everything else. Don't get me wrong. You've got to go through the whole thing, but just get out there and watch it and, you know, you'll be pleasantly surprised. Yeah. James? Yeah, um, boy, <laughs> there's so much going on. You know, I just, I want to tell people to give you hope that there are beings are here now. And I've never felt such close contact by so many different beings. And they are so stoked when somebody tunes into them. They go, oh my God, they, they're excited, you know, when this happens. You know, all the way up to the 13th dimension and the whole universe is shifting. The earth is ascending. You can't stop this process. No man or woman can stop. It's massive. So hang in there, you know, we all, it, energy's coming in or pushing everything up to the surface so we can see who they are and what they've done. And and, uh, and there's going to be some chaos, but we're going to get through this and uh, we all have to play our part. But, uh, you know, the, the ending is awesome and we're going to see things that were unimaginable, things that we would think were magic or, or technology for them. And these beings are so loving and compassionate and beautiful beings coming in right now so it's if you need a little lift up ask for it they're here yeah you know it's um it's 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 that multi-dimensional aspect and we i think we really have to like tune into that in ourselves I, literally it's like we have to make a choice i think every individual right now has to make a choice they're either going to go towards this light lightness or they're going to go towards the darkness there's no more room for gray areas and, and, and we have to move ourselves more into a multidimensional understanding of, our, of the world around us. I mean, how, how many other beings and dimensions are existing with me right now? I mean, I've seen ghosts flit by here and there while I'm here. Am I a ghost in their realm or are they a ghost in my realm? You know, I mean, we have to begin to, to move ourselves in that direction and inside of ourselves so that we can begin to trust the best instrument we have, which is the body. You know, it is the best sensing tool that we've got. So, and, you know, just look at Pete's footage, really, when you get right down to it. I mean, that the footage that he gets is is pretty epic. And over and over and over again, that, that's a lot of hubcaps, Pete. Throwing a lot of hubcaps <laughs> up here. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> as some will say that. Some will say right, that. Which is ridiculous. You, guys seen, you guys have seen it with me, but yeah, it, it, I'll be the first to admit when you've got thousands of photos and videos over an 11 year period and it's still going on. Like last week, I feel well, 
two weeks ago I filmed something during the day and I'm in the middle of nowhere. It doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter. But, yeah, yeah. I just hope um, – I'll let Mary have the last say in a moment with uh, you as well, Sharnel. But I just um, I just uh, want people to just make up their own minds. The, the, the movie's there. I've made it uh, – made it so I can reach far and wide and it's just my story, my message along with you guys as well, sharing your information and knowledge and stories as well. And and that's the bottom line is I just, if I die today, all I want to leave this world with is as long as I made somebody think, that's it. Just think. What if? Not just even about this, but about anything. Think. People don't think anymore. Not enough people think anymore. It's all just somebody else do the information for you. I'll watch it on the news and there we go. Well, it must be true. I just want people to think that's it. And this got me thinking, you know, with what I've had to live with and what I continue to live with, it's made me think outside that box. But what I'll say is that these these multidimensional experiences, they're, they're half and half, meaning half of it's actually about who you are and your true nature. And the other half is about you playing that part, which helps with the collective shift of going to a better world and creating a better tomorrow. And that's what I'll leave us with. Awesome. Well, all I'd like to say is a great thank you to all of you for the wonderful things you've shared as well. But I really think it's wonderful that we're having films like this come out now as part of this awakening. And I want to say to everyone, as James did, we've come here because we know we can change things. We haven't come here for a waste of time. There's too many of us <laughs> come from out there and we are not going to come here and say, oh, well, it's all too hard. We've come because we know we can make a difference and we come because we know we've got a new, wonderful reality that we can create. And so whenever you get down or whatever, just remember it's always darkest before the dawn. We are here because we know we can do it. Uh -huh. Awesome. Yeah, and it's interesting, Peter. Um, I just had a conversation with some a couple people this week who've had contact and kind of just uh, going into the, what they uh, have seen and asked for confirmation, got it right away like Mary was talking about. And um, one of the posts that I made about something, someone came back and said, oh, well, we can't know everything. Only Jesus can. And I was thinking about it and i was trying to figure out why that triggered me so much and i asked the person uh you know more questions and i try to be really kind when i get res program responses like that um but i was like the thing that came to me was i'm most i was most i guess triggered or upset about the fact that instead of just answering the question or talking about what we were talking about in the post there was this automatic program sentence that came back that a lot of times people have and and it's and it's because of the programming but it was because they weren't thinking for themselves the, it wasn't even answering the question that was put on there and so my response to the lady was like well do you want to answer the question now and you know and i kind of try to go that direction and sometimes i don't even go that far but that's what i ended up trying to figure out about like what was going on with me about that is i would love for people whether it's politics medical et you know education i don't know family anything for people just to think for themselves and to have permission to to have an idea or to have a thought or to remember our power or our creativity and not just be, not just have these like, you know, kind of boom, you know, answers that have been canned that someone told them or they read it or they heard it in church or read it in a book somewhere or something, whether it's super, you know, spiritual or it's churchy or whatever, you know, medical, whatever. So, you know, this to me, your work, all of you, you all put it back on each person to to do that and to remember the power and remember our creativity and to think and to trust what's inside and i know that this film is going to do that for so many people it's already doing that i've had people who've watched it who contacted me because i referred them and they've come back and said oh my god and so i know it's already happened and i'm sure you guys already got testimonies too and um but not just that but because each of you are representative 
in the in the documentary I'm seeing people who are watching contacting you guys and getting further help and further confirmation that they're not crazy and putting together these pieces that have been kind of floating around and they're like oh it doesn't make sense but it's just I know there's some things but it's not together yet so you help bring things come together and you make people feel less crazy and you also help people remember their power and that is to me is just that's one of the reasons why I'm here is I just want people to wake up to think for themselves to remember that we get we have the authority here we're the ones and it, we don't have to wait for someone to do it or come back or even from other galaxies. Like we are the ones let's do it. Let's be inspired. This movie is inspiring. All of you are inspiring and you have been very helpful for me personally, Jason, I just met here tonight, but every one of you else, uh, you know, you've been a part, an integral part of my last few years of just like figuring things out and still figuring things out. I'm not there, but um, I just want to personally, you know, give massive gratitude for all of you and for everybody watching too, because like everyone's been saying, we're all one. This is, we're figuring this out together. We're all finding each other. There, there's there been such a, a synergy of people finding like that as things are surfacing, people are actually surfacing and magnetizing like those last bit of Cheerios in the bowl that are all like holding on for dear life. You know, it's like, I feel like we're finding each other. So any last words, Peter, before we, we yeah, call just, it a night? Thank you for what you're doing. And really, from the bottom of my heart, I really want to thank everyone here. Like, it's really emotional for me at the same time because I've been through a lot in this journey. Just a yeah. lot of good times, a lot of crap. But in, in some reference to what you're saying as well, Jesus said that, yeah, you're all gods. We're all gods. And it's just a matter of time until people find that within them. And if someone's not soon, some eventually will. When that time comes, people are going to have their own revelation about the greater reality. And that's where it's meant to happen for those when the time's right. And to all the viewers and people that support me, just keep doing what you're doing. You know, play your part, stay on your own train track, do what you do. This is what we're here for, what Mary said. Like people are upset going through a hard time but this is like we're the strongest beings here at this time to help shift human consciousness the kids are even more powerful than us each generation is stronger and stronger bringing in this snowball effect of energy and just remember that you're all amazing powerful beings i can't stress that enough every single one of us so yeah blessings to all and thank you as well awesome. we should do a show on that we should do a show on on how big is your god and what would jesus do <laughs> you know, if a big ship came by, what would Jesus do? He'd say, hey, if you can help, get down here. <laughs> I, would, I would love to do a show on that. Let's do that. I am totally about that. Definitely. All right, guys. Well, thank you. And thank you for everybody who's out here watching and all your beautiful comments. And I'm going to ask again that everyone please do your due diligence and share this because yeah. with everything that's going on in the world, you have no idea if, if this could be the thing that helps cheer someone up or inspire them to remember their power, their love, their truth. Their, maybe they'll feel less crazy in the middle of the crazy. So definitely share and tag. Get the word out. Thank you to everybody. And um, we'll meet again. And we'll, we'll catch up soon. Uh, you guys have a good one. Have a great weekend, too. Yeah. Make it viral. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone.